So for today's class, we'll be talking uh, more about advanced algebra in AMC 8, uh, mainly focusing on tw problems from 2015 and beyond. So let me just share my screen. All right, so here we have our harder AMC 8 problems. So in today's class, you'll notice that um, some of these will be uh, sim similar to all the problems that we've talked about last week. For example, percentage problem, fraction problem, and the like, uh, but these will be harder. So let's start with the first problem of the day. So an arithmetic sequence is a sequence in which each term after the first is obtained by adding a constant to the previous term. For example, 2, 5, 8, 11, 14 is an arithmetic sequence with five terms in which the first term is two and the constant add is three. Each row and each column in the five point by five array is an arithmetic sequence of five terms. The square in the center is labeled X as shown. What is the value of X? So we know that this whole thing is arithmetic. Each row, each column is an arithmetic sequence. So starting with the first column, if the last term is 17, then we could get a sequence that looks like this. One, one plus, uh, let's, all right, let's call the common difference, uh, and uh, let's call the con common difference D. One plus D, one plus two D, one plus three D, and then uh, for our last one, we have one plus 40. So uh, these are our five terms of our arithmetic sequence. We know that this term, one plus 40, is equal to 17. Uh, so can anyone tell me what, what a D is in the chat? Uh, sure, let me see if I can make the screen larger. Yeah, this is as large as I can get it right now. Right. So as everyone agrees, the difference is four. So that's how we get one plus four, five plus four, that gives us nine. Nine plus four, that should give us uh, 13, not 14, sorry about that. Uh, this right here should say 13. Right, uh, let me actually try and do, try and annotate with. All right, sure, this should be far easier of a way to do this. All right. Okay, good. All right, so basically what we have here is we have 13 right here. And now let's continue onwards. So we have one through 25. So similarly, we have a case where we have one, one plus D, one plus 2D, one plus 3D, and then all the way to one plus 40. So in this case, we have one plus 40 equals 25. So can anyone tell me what D is equal to in this case? Six, right? Everyone agrees it's six. So one plus six, that's seven. Seven plus six, that's 13. 13 plus six, that's 19. 19 plus six, that's 25, that's nice. All right, so now ordinarily, um, now we want to find the last term, uh, the arithmetic sequence that's going this way. So essentially we have 25, 25 plus D, 25 plus 2D is right here. 25 plus three is right here. And then we have 25 plus 40 is equal to 81. All right. So can anyone tell me what D is equal to in this case? Yeah, it looks like people are agreeing that it is indeed equal to uh, 14. So now, 
so since this is equal to 14, then we basically get 25 plus 14, that's 39. Uh, and then what's 39 plus 14 equal to? It's equal to 53. Oh, oops, eraser, not that. that it's equal to 50. Why is it? Oh, right, right. All right, 53, sorry about that. And then 53 plus 14 is equal to 67. 67 plus 14 is equal to 81. So now we have um, something very nice right here. So essentially uh, what we have is, if we look at uh, this right here, we have a row where we have nine, nine plus D, 9 plus 2D, 9 plus 3D, and 9 plus 4D. So using this, we can find what D is in this row, and then we can basically take 9 plus 2D, that's equal to X. So now let's do that, right? So if we have 9, 9 plus D, dot, 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 9 plus 4D, oh, oops, 9 plus 4D is equal to 53, then what's D equal to? 11, good job. So since D is equal to 11, then can anyone tell me what X is equal to? Good job, it's indeed equal to, um, X is equal to nine plus 2D, which is equal to nine plus 20, 22, which is equal to 31. So that's one way to solve this. So basically what we did is solve the first row, uh, sorry, solve the first column, solve the last column, and then we got uh, X using this sequence right here. However, there's a different way we can solve this. Notice how we solve the top row, right? So if we can solve the bottom row, get something, uh, get an answer like Y right here, then we can basically get that 13 plus 40 is equal to Y, then we get 13 plus 2D is equal to X. So I want you to uh, find what Y is right here on your own and put it in chat. All right, good. So it looks like a bunch of people are getting 49. So basically what you can do is 17 plus 40 is equal to 81. Solve for D, uh, get 17 plus 2D, 2D equals Y, and then you can solve for X right there. However, there's one uh, special trick I'd like you all to know about. So uh, normally you can't do this. However, since we're given um, the four corners, right? And we know that they're in arithmetic sequence, then basically we know that um, that these, wait, let me actually select like green, right? So that this is equal, this right here is equal to one plus 17 over two. This right here is equal to 17 plus 81, which would then give us 98 over two is 49. This is equal to 25 plus 81, um, which uh, over two, which would give us 53. This is equal to uh, one plus 25 equals 26 over two is equal to 13, which gives us this. And then X can just be given by uh, the average of these two. So basically nine plus 53, that would give us 62 over uh, two. So that would give us 31, 13 plus 49. Uh, so that would also give us 62 over two, that's 31. So that's also a different way we can get X. The reason why we can do that is because of uh, something pretty nice about arithmetic uh, sequences. So essentially, if you have an arithmetic sequence uh, that looks something like this, you have A, A plus D, where A is the first term, A plus 2D, so on and so forth. Uh, then uh, basically the term in the middle is equal to the average of the first term and the last term. 
So that's just uh, something pretty neat that I think uh, you should all know about uh, just in case it's useful for future contests. All right, so now let's go uh, and move on to the next problem, problem 20. So Ralph went to the store and bought 12 pairs of socks for a total of $24. Some of the socks he bought cost $1 a pair and some of the socks he bought cost $3 a pair and some of the socks he bought cost a total of $4. So if he bought at least one pair of each type, how many pairs of $1 socks did Ralph buy? So this is a classic case of Diophantine equations. So essentially what you do is, um, essentially what a Diophantine equation is like, uh, say we have something like 5x uh, plus, I don't know, 2y is equal to 100. So um, here we would have a bunch of different cases for x and y. Uh, what a Diophantine basically does is you have integer solutions for x and y, and then you can do casework, right? x is equal to 20, y equals zero, x, uh, x is equal to zero, y equals 50, so on and so forth. However, uh, this for this case, it's um, a Diophantine equation uh, with only one possible solution. So let's start with what we have. So we have uh, some socks, some of them are pretty cheap, uh, they cost $1 a pair. So the socks are somewhat nice. They have $3 a pair. They cost $3 a pair. And some of them go for a premium of $4 a pair. They might be alpaca, a wool, or something like that. Something very fancy. So um, in total, we have 1x plus 3y plus 4. Oh, oops. Sorry about that. Plus 4y. My mouse just shook. Uh, let me actually move something so my mouse will be steadier. Uh, I had a notebook in the way, so my handwriting was kind of bad. Plus 4z is equal to $24. Uh, this is something like a Diophantine equation. So we also know that he bought at least one pair of each type. So basically, he did something like this. So 1 times x minus 1 plus three times y minus one, plus four times z minus one is equal to, what's 24 minus one minus three minus uh, four? So basically uh, what we're doing here is we're excluding um, the amount he spent when he bought like each pair of socks, if that makes sense. Um, is equal to 16, right? 24 minus one, that's 23, minus 3, 20, minus 4, 16. Uh, so the reason why we're doing this is the, because it makes this equation that much nicer. So now essentially we have one plus an integer plus three times an integer plus four times an integer is equal to 16. So now uh, there isn't really a neat way to do this. Um, Basically, what we can do is something of a guess and check. So we, so the biggest limiting factor right now is the uh, socks that cost four dollars a pair. So for these socks, he can buy a maximum of four pairs, because because uh, let's look at it like this. We know that uh. Oh, okay. All right. Turns out I'm also blind. So uh, we, I missed one crucial part of the problem. Uh, he went to the store and bought 12 pairs of socks for a total of $24. So essentially, uh, we also know that x minus 1 plus y minus 1, plus, well, x plus y plus z equals 12. So x minus 1 plus y minus 1 plus z minus 1 is equal to 9. Essentially, we have it. But actually, it's kind of useless like this. So basically, let's just write x plus y plus z is equal to 9. So uh, Ralph can't go, uh, do something like this. He can't just like buy four pairs of $4 socks and call it a day. Well, along with three other requisite pairs he had to buy uh, when he says he bought at least one pair of each type of one pair of each type. So what can we do with this information? So essentially what we can do is something like this. 
So let's look at, let's ignore this equation right now. And let's look at equation one, if we call this equation one. So let's just subtract this from, uh, let's call this equation two. Let's subtract equation two from equation one. So then what we get is two y plus three z is equal to 15. Uh, now this is a lot easier to face, right? So we know that uh, 2y plus 3z equals 15. So can anyone tell me what's the solution for this style of Fanting equation? What is y and what is z in this case? Right, so it looks like uh, maybe you need a bit of help. So basically in this case, y is equal to zero and z equals, to f z equals five. Why is that the case? So we know this, three times five is equal to 15. And uh, so y must be zero in that case. But uh, does y necessarily have to be zero? So let's look at a case where of z is not equal to 5. If z equals 4, then we have 2y plus uh, 12 is equal to 15. So 2y is equal to 3. That can't work. 2y uh, is equal to, well, let's say z is equal to 2 in this case. So then that means that 2y is equal to 15 minus 6. That means 2y is equal to 9. That can't work. z equals 3. 2y is equal to 15 minus 9. That's, that means, um, 2y is equal to 6, uh, that means y equals 3 in that case. However, the case we're going with is, I think it's, all right, okay. So basically, there are multiple uh, solutions for this case then. So either z is equal to 3 and y is also equal to 3, or z equals 5, y equals 0. So these are the only two cases. So what happens here then? So if x plus y plus z equals 9, and x, y plus z equals 6, then x is equal to 3. Otherwise, y plus z equals 5 then x plus uh, 5 is equal to 9, x is equal to 4. However, this case cannot exist. Remember, why is the number of uh, two, why is the number of $3 socks? So y must be at least equal to 1. So in this case, then x is equal to 9 minus 6 is equal to 3. So um, in that case, then it's equal to a, which is right here. Uh, does anyone understand this question or do you want me to repeat anything? All right. So essentially what we did is uh, we used two equations. So let's call the number of all right, okay. So it looks like some people have questions. So let me just uh, repeat this briefly. So we have 12 pairs of socks and he bought uh, for a total of $24. So let's say that uh, he buys X amount of $1 socks plus Y amount of uh, $3 socks plus Z amount of $4 socks. This is equal to 12. Now let's uh, consider an alternative, um, the other uh, equation, sorry. So let's say that x plus 3y 
plus 4z is equal to $24. So we know this to be true because he buys a total of um, one, so x times one plus y amount of three dollar stocks plus four amount of z amount of four dollar stocks gives him a total of twenty four dollars. So now let's basically uh, subtract this equation from our second equation. So we get two y plus three z is equal to twelve. I feel like my first uh explanation was kind of convoluted, so I'll be explaining this again. So 2y plus 3z equals $12. So what can y and z be equal to in this case? So essentially what we have is 2y plus 3z equals 2.12. So uh, we know that y must be equal to 2 and z must be equal to three, uh, sorry, y must be equal to three, and z must be equal to two. The reason why this is so is because if we were to take any other case, then uh, that means that uh, the solution wouldn't be an integer. For example, if y were to be uh, one, then z would be equal to 10 over three, y equal to two, z is equal to, a over three, so on and so forth. So this is the only possible solution. Does anyone see, does everyone see why that is the case? If you have a question, please uh, ask it right now. Since this is uh, one of the more complicated steps in the solution, where you have to have some intuition to get uh, that this is the only integer solution. Otherwise, I mean, you could just like guess and check, but that would take a bit more time. All right, so it looks like um, no one has any questions about this. So essentially if x, y equals three, z equals two, uh, then we get that y plus z equals five, so x is equal to seven. Uh, so the reason why I got the wrong answer um, in my first explanation is because I wrote something wrong. So it should be x plus y plus z equals 12, not equal to 9. So what I did was essentially I took x minus 1 plus y minus 1 plus z minus 1 equals to 9. And then I also took um, x minus 1 plus 3 times y minus 1 plus four times C minus one is equal to 20, uh, 21. However, uh, this is a pretty convolu convoluted solution. So I realized it would be better if I just stuck to X, if I just uh, stuck to X plus Y plus Z. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, does anyone have any questions uh, with, my, well, with my solution this time? Okay, all right, okay, good. Now let's move on to the, so it's actually D. So um, I made a mistake on my first solution. So basically what I did is that when I saw, uh, when I saw he bought at least one pair of each type, I basically took uh, X minus one, Y minus one and Z minus one as a, variables that I would be using. However, that's a pretty convoluted solution. In, a, uh, in one part, I actually wrote x plus y plus z instead of x minus one, y minus one, z minus one, which is why I made a mistake. So it basically made my solution unnecessarily messy. All right. Annie and Bonnie are running laps around a 400 meter oval track. So they start together, but Annie has pulled ahead because she runs 25% faster than Bonnie. How many laps will Annie have run when she first passes Bonnie? So this is pretty similar to some problems that we did uh, last week. So I want you all to 
try this uh for yourself right now is around like 12 54 ish so i'll give you like maybe one minute since it's uh, not as easy as problems as we did last week and then we'll talk about it together All right, so wait uh, like 30 more seconds uh, for other people to get an answer. All right, so I see a lot of mixed answers in chat. So let's do this. Let's say that Bonnie runs at a speed of V and let's say Annie runs at a speed of five over four V since she runs 25% uh, faster than Bonnie. So how many laps will Annie have run when she first passes Bonnie? So let's look at it this way. So the time they, uh, so the amount of time t that they spend is the same. However, at some point, uh, v t and five v over four. So they will meet five v t over four. So they will meet at some point in the track where this is equal to is equal to some integer plus five v t over four. What I mean is something like this. So let's say this is our oval track. So Bonnie, she runs like something like this. Slow, 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 slow. But, uh, so let's say somewhere right here, right? And then uh, Annie, on the other hand, she runs much faster than Bonnie. So she, I don't know, she runs something like this and then they meet at the same point. So that's what I mean. So basically uh, what they do is that their distance is the same except uh, Bonnie just runs like 400 meters more than Annie. So what do we do then? So we have a uh, V, five over four V. And we have a T such that VT is equal to 400 plus five over four V, T. So in this case, we can do uh, something like this. So let's just uh, sub. Oh, okay, sorry. I actually put the 400 on the wrong place. Uh, sorry about that. So a uh, 400 should actually go right here. All right, so then 400 is equal to one fourth VT. So 1600 
is equal to vt. So that's the total distance that uh, Annie, uh, sorry, that Bonnie travels. So what's the distance that Annie travels? It's equal to five over four vt. So five over four times 1600 is equal to 2000 meters, otherwise known as five laps. So that's our answer, D. So the reason why it's five laps and the reason why we have 400 plus VT is because something like this. So Bonnie runs like X amount of laps plus, uh, and then when Annie passes Bonnie, that means that she has run exactly one more lap than Bonnie. So uh, her distance is equal to VT plus 400 meters. So that's our solution. Does that make sense? If anyone has any questions, be sure to like uh, message me. You can like uh, direct message me or private message me, whatever it's called with Zoom, in case uh, you're a bit nervous about everyone seeing your question. So it looks like no one has any questions, so let's move on. So the sum of 25 consecutive even integers is equal to 10,000. So what is the largest of these 25 consecutive integers? So it looks like some people have a good idea on how to do this. So we have one solution already. So this is somewhat of a number theory problem, uh, which uh, makes it okay that you don't know how to do it since uh, today is mostly algebra focused, but uh, since this is kind of like an algebra plus a number theory problem, I thought it would be nice to include it on today's handout to show how we could have multiple areas of math intersect. For example, we'll also be doing a geometry and algebra problem uh, that deals with coordinate planes. So we have a sum of 20 sec 25 consecutive even integers. So an even integer, we can write that as 2n. So this is a standard way on how to write an even integer. So where n is any arbitrary integer. So basically, uh, that means that two times n would always give us an even integer, all right? So let's say that two n is equal to the largest of these such integers. So you have two n, what's the smallest number after that? It's two n minus two, right? What's the next smallest uh, consecutive even integer? 2n minus four. Next smallest, 2n minus six. So how can we write the smallest even integer? So let's uh, please put that in chat. If you have an idea on how we could express the smallest even integer in terms of 2n and like minus some integer. Uh, close. So how we would express it something like this, 2n minus 48. Good job, Joseph. Right, uh, so the reason why we express as 2n minus 48 is because if we have 25 consecutive even integers, uh, then that means we have to uh, take 2n minus an even integer to get to the next consecutive smaller even integer. And if we have 25 such even integers, then we would have 2n minus 0, 2n minus 2, 2n minus 4, all the way to 2n minus 48. The reason why it's not 2n minus 50 is because if you look at it like this, so you have 2n minus 0, and uh, we can express this 2n minus 2, dot, 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 right? So the first term is in terms of 2n minus 0, second term is in in terms of 2n minus 2, then it would make sense such that where we have the mth consecutive even integer, we'd have 2n minus 2 times m minus 1. So that's how we would express the 25th uh, smallest consecutive even integer, 2n minus 2 times 25 minus 1, 25 minus 1, that's 24. So 2n minus 2 times 24, that gives us 2n minus 48. Uh, all right. 
So now, uh, this is our, now let's sum this all up. So we have 25 such terms. There's 25 terms in this sequence. So what we essentially can do is take 2n plus 2n minus 48. Take their average and multiply by 25, since there are 25 such terms. Uh, do you all know um, the formula of, if you have a sum of sum of an arithmetic series? So basically, you take the smallest uh, term, add the largest term, divide by two. So you basically to take the average, and then you multiply by how many terms there are. So in this case, it's 2n plus 2n minus 40 over 2 times 25. Uh, so now let's simplify this expression. Uh, we have 4n minus 48 over 2, which is equal to 2n minus 24 times 25. And now the reason why we all did this is because we know that this expression is equal to in terms of 10,000. So we can divide by 25, 2n minus 24, is equal to four zero zero. So now can anyone tell me what n is using a bit of uh, arithmetic? Sorry, yeah, 212, except it's kind of more useful to know what 2n is uh, since basically 2n is equal to 400 plus 24 is equal to 424, yeah. Uh, 212, uh, you can actually take 212 times two. Uh, that's 424, so that's our answer. Uh, remember that we define two N as the largest number. So like N is actually somewhat more useless in this scenario. All right, let's move on to the next problem. Suppose A, B, and C are non-zero real numbers and A plus B plus C is equal to zero. What are the possible values for a over uh, absolute value of a plus b over absolute value of b plus c over absolute value of c plus a, b, c over absolute value of a, b, c? All right. So it looks like someone has a question. Uh, do you want to put it in chat or? Or do you want to present this problem? Is that why you raise your hand? All right, uh, I'll assume that's a mistake then. So what are the possible values for this expression? So let's first look at the possible values for A, B, and C. So A plus B plus C is equal to zero. So we have several, uh, solutions here. A is equal to B is equal to C is equal to zero. Unfortunately, we cannot take this case because if this were true, that means that A, B, and C would violate this condition. So unfortunately, that is not a case we can consider. So now let's look at another case where A we can express that in terms of minus b minus c. So we can express a is equal to negative b minus c. So let's do that. So let's say b and c are positive. Oh, so we essentially are doing casework here. So uh, if we consider the case where b and c are positive, then we can do this. That means a is, is, a is a negative number. That means that a over absolute value of a, that's equal to negative a, plus b over absolute value of b, that would be positive, plus c over absolute value of c, that would be positive, plus abc over absolute value of abc. We know b and c are positive. Uh, a is negative, so that means that absolute value of, uh, that means that abc is equal to a negative number, so that means that this would be negative a, b, c. So if we were to get this, then this would be negative one plus one plus one plus negative one. So that would give us zero. So yay, that's our first case. Now we have our second case. Well, 
we know that uh, they cannot all be positive. That would not be possible, right? Uh, so instead, let's look at the other case. B is positive, C is not. So now uh, we also have two cases. So now we can write C in terms of negative A minus B. Let's say that um, A and B are both positive, C is not. So now let's look at this case. So in this case, we essentially get the same result. Same if we have B is equal to negative A minus C, where A and C are positive, B is not, since it's all symmetric. So now let's look at the other case, where A is positive and B and C are negative. So if that is so, where we only have one positive and two negative, then we have this. So we have A over A plus B over negative B plus C over negative C plus. So you have A, B, uh, that's A times B, that's negative times C, that's positive. So A, B, C over A, B, C. So this is still equal to zero. Now I want to ask someone a challenge, a challenge question. Is there any other possible value uh, for this entire expression? Is there a case where, uh, for example, like A is, where A is uh, positive, B is positive, C is negative, or like some other case that we haven't considered that would give us a different answer, one that's not zero specifically? All right, so it looks like most of you agree with me that zero is the only possible case. All right, good job. Now let's move on to the next problem. So each day for four days, Linda traveled for one hour at a speed that resulted in her traveling one mile in an integer number of minutes. Each day after the first, her speed decreased so the number of minutes to travel one mile increased by five minutes over the preceding day. Each of the four days, her distance traveled was also an integer number of miles. What is the total number of miles of these four trips? So this is also a speed problem, a uh, type of problem that we gone over last week. So I want to uh, give you all one minute or maybe two minutes to solve this problem uh, and then put your answer in chat. All right, so I'll give you like uh, 30 more seconds.
All right, so this is a pretty interesting question. So first, we know that um, she travels one mile in an integer number of minutes. And next, we know that her distance traveled was also an integer number of miles. So that means that, um, so let's say it takes her X amount of, uh, X amount of time to travel the first day. Uh, her speed is uh, one mile for every X minutes the first day, one plus X, one, uh, one mile for X plus five minutes, a uh, one mile for X plus 10 minutes, and for the next day, one mile for X plus 15 minutes. We also know that her distance travel was an integer number of miles. So that means that 60 uh, minutes times one mile over X is an integer. 60 times one over X plus five is an integer. 60 times one mile over X plus 10 uh, minutes is an integer. 60 times one over X plus 15 is also an integer. Uh, so that's like, our first step to this uh, problem. So first we know x is an integer, and we also know that these four expressions right here are an integer. So let me change the color, a more interesting color. So we know 60 over x is an integer, 60 over x plus five is an integer, 60 over x plus 10 is an integer, and 60 over x plus 15 is an integer. Um, and by the way, x doesn't necessarily have to be a multiple of five. However, there is only one solution of x. Can anyone tell me what it is? What could x possibly be? Good job. x is indeed equal to five. So basically, uh, we have 60 over five, that's 12, 60 over five plus five, that's 10, 60 over 10, that's six, 60 over five plus 10, that's 60 over 15, that's four, 60 over five plus 15, that's 20, 60 over 20 is equal to three. So the reason why we get this is if we prime factorize 60, right? 60 is equal to 1 times 60, two times 30, three times 20, or actually, if we factorize, not just not prime factorize, four times 15, five times 12, right? Uh, we basically get an interesting pattern. So we have, let's order it this way. So we have five times 12. Oh, and six times 10, right? I forgot to include that. 10 times six, 15 times four, 20 times three, and 30 plus 30 times two. So we notice that in this group, we have five factors that increase by five, by a consecutive five. So that basically means that X has to be equal to five. Any other value of X would not work. For example, if X were to be equal to like, I don't know, it's 10. So that would mean X equals 60 over X, 60 over 10 equals six, 60 over 10 plus five, 15 equals four, so far so good, 60 over, x plus 10, that's 20, 60 over 20 equals three. So far, so good. 60 over 10 plus 15, that's equal to 60 over 25, which is not equal to an integer. So the only valid value for x is equal to five in our problem. So now we have x, right? So we're not done yet. We want, still want to find the total number of miles he travels. She travels, sorry. So 60 over five, that's equal to 12. Let me change to an even in more interesting color, that's 12 miles. What's 60 over x plus five? Can anyone put that in chat? Right, it's six, good job. Remember x equals five. So it's 60 times one over x plus five, 60 over 10, yeah, right? Yeah, uh, so it looks like one plus one equals three, got it. So essentially we have 12, we have six. 60 times one over 15, that's four. And 60 times one over 15, that's three. So 12 plus six plus four plus three. 
Can anyone tell me what our final solution should be? 25, good job everyone. So let's move on to our next problem. So Bella begins to walk from her house towards Ella's house. At the same time, Bella begins to ride her bicycle towards Ella's, Bella's house. Uh, by the way, um, I have a, right now I don't have a Zoom Pro account. So this session uh, d might kick us out in like around a minute since uh, it's 1.20 right now. However, we still have a, uh, around 10 minutes left of class. So I'm not sure if it will actually kick us out or not, uh, but just in case, I'll invite y'all back in uh, with, and I'll post another Zoom link in our Google Classroom, just in case. So I should have a, or Alvademic in general should have a Zoom Pro account uh, by next week. So hopefully we'll have a one hour session for sure next week. So Bella begins to walk from her house towards her friend's Ella's house. At the same time, Ella begins to ride her bicycle towards Bella's house. They each maintain a constant speed, and Ella rides five times as fast as Bella walks. The distance between their houses is two miles, which is 10,560 feet, and Bella covers two and a half feet with each step. How, much, how many steps will Bella take by the time she meets Ella? So you want everyone to uh, Take a look at this question, try and solve it for uh, around one minute or two minutes, and then I'll come back with a solution. So the reason why I always like suggest you to spend like one minute, two minutes, is to see if you can solve this problem on your own, and then compare your solution with mine. I think uh, that's the fastest way uh, to grow as a, as a math problem solver. Basically, you first take a stab at a problem, and then see if you can get it, see if you don't, and then look look back at it uh, when you see the real solution, when you see a solution. All right, uh, does anyone have a solution for this problem? All right, looks like some people have, a, have an answer already. All right, so let's look at this problem. So Bella covers two and a half feet with each step. So that means in the time it takes for her to cover one step, she travels 2.5 feet. So similarly, Bella, oh sorry, Ella, who rides her bike, in the same t amount of time, she covers five times as much distance. That's what the definition of like vehicle is like. Her velocity is equal to five times of, her speed is equal to five times of Bella's speed. So she can cover, oops, so she can cover 2.5 times five feet. Uh, so that essentially means that she can cover 12.5 feet with each step. Does that make sense? So in the amount of time that Bella takes to uh, cover one step, she can cover uh, five times as much distance, which gives us 12.5 feet. So uh, let's add their speeds together. Yeah, uh, so basically 
Andrew's solution is uh, what I'm going to do. So if we add their speeds together, then we get, they travel combined 15 feet uh, in the amount of time that Bella takes to take a step. So we know that uh, time is equal to distance over speed. So we have a total distance of 10,560. Oh, oops, this should be a zero, 10,560 feet. And now let's divide by 15 feet over one unit of time, where t is the amount of time that Bella takes to take one step. So we can count out phi and feet. So essentially, this will give us 704 t, where t is the amount of time Bella, Bella takes to take each step. So that means that she takes 704 steps. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, Mikkel, uh, your solution is also uh, works pretty well. So essentially what he did is let's call uh, Bella's uh, speed V and let's call Ella's speed 5V. So if we were to add them together, we would get 7V. So if we take the total distance 10,560 over 6V, you would then get 1,760 uh, feet over V. And then you could divide this by 2.5, where 2.5 is basically V. And then you, if you were to uh, cancel this out and basically uh, divide 1,760 by 2.5, you would get 7 over 4. Uh, it's a pretty similar solution. All right, does anyone have any questions? That uh, solution makes sense, right? All right. Nice. So now let's move on to our next problem. So how many perfect cubes lie between seven, two times eight uh, plus one, two to the eight plus one and two to the 18 plus one inclusive. So this is a more of a number theory-ish problem. So we actually want to move on to another problem that's more algebra focused or more speed focus really, because uh, these speed distance time problems are one of the major pillars of the AMC8 algebra section. So let's look at problem 16 instead, and please do problem 15 as homework. Uh, this is more like a for fun problem, just in case we had a lot of extra time, because it's more of a number theory problem. So I think uh, it will be better to talk about it in our number theory section in the upcoming weeks. So uh, this dude drives 50 miles at an average speed of 30 miles per hour. How many additional miles will he have to drive at 55 miles per hour to average 50 miles per hour for the entire trip? Yes. Apparently Zoom has been extra kind to us and hasn't kicked us out yet. So, He travels 50 miles at an hour speed of 30 MP miles per hour. So now he decides to stop slacking and essentially uh, travel at a 55 miles per hour because he wants to have a nice round average of 50 miles per hour for the entire trip. So how many additional miles will he have to drive in order to do this? So this is actually a pretty simple problem. So I'll give you all like 30 seconds to do it. And then we can have time for a special problem 21, which I think is like one of the more interesting problems of today's set. All right, uh, do y'all want a bit more time to do this problem?
So it looks like that's a yay for more problem for more time. All right. So I'll give you like 30 more seconds. Uh, looks like someone is asking when do we end we actually never end math is forever we should always do amc eight for the rest of our lives oh just kidding we end at 1 30 which isn't like one minute all right uh so unfortunately it looks like we won't get to problem 21 oh well all right so we have 15 uh, so basically he travels 15 miles at an average speed of 30 miles per hour. And now he wants to uh, be a big boy and average a total of 50 miles per hour for an entire trip. So let's, uh, so he, at first he, uh, so let's say that the, for an entire trip, he has 15 plus D, where D is the distance uh, this dude travels where he travels at 55 miles per hour. So the average speed is equal to total distance over total time. Yeah, math forever, yes. And now uh, total time is equal to first he spends, so first he spends half an hour uh, going at 30 miles per hour and now he spends like a D over 55 amount of time traveling at, uh, uh, D over 55 amount of time traveling at 55 miles per hour, where he travels an extra distance of D at 55 miles per hour. This is equal to, yeah, 50 miles per hour. So now let's uh, expand, multiply. 15 plus D is equal to 15 times 15 over 30, which is one half, plus D over 55. By the way, 50 miles per hour is actually not that fast, in Houston at least. So we have 15 plus D is equal to 25 plus 50 D over 50, uh, 50 D over 55. So let's subtract, um, so let's subtract, uh, 15, right? So uh, now we get D is equal to 10. Oh, oops. D is equal to 10 plus 50 D over 55. And now let's subtract 50 D over 55 from both sides. So basically you get 55 D minus 50 D over 55 equals 10. So 5D is equal to 10 times 55. So can anyone tell me what D is equal to? One hundred ten, yay. So he travels for a total of 100, 110 miles at a big boy speed of 50, uh, 55 miles per hour. So that concludes class today. So I'll be uploading, so I'll be uploading this video or like I'll be uploading this video to Alphademic and I'll also be uploading this week's handout to our Google Classroom. So by the way, uh, just be sure to do like this problem, number 21, which is a pretty interesting problem, I think.
where it's an application of algebra geometry, basically coordinates in coordinate bashing. All right, here we have a percentage problem and then next, which is a pretty easy problem. So like those two problems plus the one we skipped before. All right. Okay, see y'all next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you, bye. And bye. Bye. bye.